Hello Year 4, welcome to our English lesson. Today we are going to read Walk with a Wolf by Jani Hauker and it's illustrated by Sarah Fox Davies. So this is a combination of fiction and non-fiction, so quite an interesting book. Let's give it a read, see if you like it. So once wolves roam nearly all the lands on the north of the northern hemisphere. So we've been talking about northern southern hemispheres and geography, haven't we? But they have been hunted and killed by humans for centuries, and today they are extinct or very rare in places where lots of people live, including Europe and much of North America. Most wolves now live in the far north of the world, in Alaska, Siberia and parts of Canada, such as Yukon Territory, where this story is set. Walk with a wolf. Walk with a wolf in the cold air before sunrise. She moves quiet as mist between spruce trees and birches, a silent grey shadow. She slides between the boulders and trots over blue pebbles to the edge of the lake. And there's a lovely wolf there. She plunges through slush ice and laps the chill water, snaps as a feather that drifts down from a goose wing that splashes to shore and shakes herself like a dog. So there we have the story, which is fiction. And in the italics, it's a different type of font of writing, we have the fact, which is, wolves are probably the first large animals to live with people and all kinds of dog we know today are descended from them. Back to the story. There's deep snow on the mountains, snow clouds bank in the east, winter is coming and the geese fly south. Run with the wolf as she bounds up on the steep slope. She sniffs at a skull that stares at the lake. Moss grows on the antlers, the bone has turned grey. There's no meat on it now and she's hungry. There's the wolf. She's hungry now, but there's no meat on that, is it? It's decomposed. So our fact is, during the summer months, a wolf may hunt alone and catch fish, hare and squirrels and other small animals. But these creatures go into hiding in the winter to escape from the freezing cold weather. Howl with the wolf in the dawn, thin and icy. Deep with, from her chest, the eerie sound comes Long, low music, the song of the Arctic. Another howl answers. So the wolves are communicating by howling. With a wag of her tail, the wolf runs to the pack. Three sons and a daughter, cubs from the spring, squirm on her belly, on their bellies and lick her neck. Mother wolves give birth in springtime. They can have anything from 1 to 11 cubs each year. Although they don't stay together all the time, most wolves live in a family called Pax. The black wolf greets her with a stare from his pale eyes. He's her mate, the pack's strongest hunter, and he's hungry too. The wolf pack is ready, and they set off together like eight ghost dogs silent and stealthy as the coming of frost. Three ravens are flying high overhead. And there's the pack being led by their leader. Most packs have up to eight wolves in them, although packs can have as many as 50, some, as many as 50 have sometimes been seen. Wow, imagine seeing 50 wolves. Hunt with a wolf on the trail of a bull moose, following its tracks and its scent on the ground. Wolves have to hunt as a pack if they are to kill large animals, such as moose and deer. So remember, they hunt in a pack if they want a larger animal, or if they're a lone wolf or on their own hunting, they might find a rabbit, like we've said, small creatures. There's a crash in the bushes. The moose is close. The wolves crouch on their bellies, their hearts beating fast. There's danger in hunting. A kick from a moose can break a wolf's rib. Charge with a wolf! The pack breaks through the bushes, swift as grey lightning, with one bolt of black. There's the leader. 
The moose turns and sees them, but he's old and he's limping. There are scars on his legs. The wolves leap at him, biting. Hear the moose bellow. Hear the wolves panting as they drag him down. Drops of his blood fall like berries to the ground. I might have said this before, but when I'm watching nature programmes, I really can't watch it when some animal dies. And I know it's nature. We we eat animals. Well, if you're not vegetarian, you won't. But we've all got to eat, haven't we? It's a food chain. We've got to survive. Rest with a wolf, no longer hungry. She watches the cubs come to join in the feast. If there is plenty of food around, pack members would all feed at once. But if meat is scarce, the strongest wolves will eat first and the youngest cubs last. Sleep with a wolf while a blizzard is blowing. The sky is full of a million grey ice moths as the wind dries the flakes down. Backs to the gale, the wolves curl amongst the boulders, heads tucked between hind legs and noses covered by the fur of their tails. Dream with a wolf as the pole star is shining. There's thick snow on the ground and a shivering wind, but the wolf dreams that she is walking with the new cubs in warm sunlight as the wild geese return with their spring to the lake. Isn't that beautiful? All tucked up. I'm wishing that it was warmer. The end. So there we have our index, which we've talked about with books that are non-fiction, usually have an index. So if you wanted to look up um, hunting, you go to page 10, 18, 20 and 23, which would mention it. Look up at the pages to find out all about these wolf things and don't forget to look at both kinds of word. This kind and this kind. So this kind is obviously giving you the facts. And this kind for the, the fancy font is, oh, that's giving you the facts. This is parsing it, get it right. So this is giving you the facts and this is the story. Fiction, non-fiction. The end. Did you like that story? Walk with a wolf. The end.